Hey, it's Lisa with ZZ Easy, Fossil Finding Female, and Exercise With Me. I am, today's the 27th of January, 2023, and I was wanting, I just did the showing of the, um, the tumbled stones because I'm returning that double barrel because it was not, uh, the lid was not staying on tight, the little screw was breaking, so I ordered a different one, so hopefully it'll get here soon, but, um, those stones were... I mean, they're just amazing, so you should go check that that one out. I haven't uploaded it yet, though, but it will be uploaded with this one. Anyway, I got a comment yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure, that said um, that the fossils couldn't be DNA tested. And I was like, hmm, I don't know. I really didn't look that up, you know, because Mud Fossil University, Roger there said that he'd had a lung and a finger of a giant tested and something else, a duck or some other things that he had tested at Helix Lab. So um, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I, I believe that... Uh, Roger at Mud Fossil Fossils is, um, you know, believing what he's been told and that, he's, that I believe he sent them to the lab and so forth and so on. So I wanted to briefly bring up, well, I looked this up and I wanted to kind of say what these people are saying that is on the conversation.com about dinosaurs. Um, here's a picture. I don't know if you can actually see the picture. Probably not. Maybe you can. That's a part of a dinosaur that they've gotten DNA off of. Okay, so if I go back up here to, uh, there's a lot of stuff here, so you might want to check it out yourself, theconversation.com slash dinosaurs. Um, it says, dinosaur bones, hidden life revealed inside them. One of the tricks you, le you learn hunting dinosaurs in Canada is to look for orange dinosaur bones or dull browns, tans, and grays. But in the middle of a drab sandstone of the Badlands, a dry landscape where wind and water have worn away much of the rock, you'll sometimes catch a flash of fluorescent orange, walk over, and you may well find a dinosaur bone weathering out. So the, the orange is lichen growing on the bone. The bone gives the lichen a stable foothold in the eroding landscape. It's porous, storing moisture during droughts and full of minerals like phosphate, vital to a growing lichen. It's strange to think that something that died 76 million years ago, now that's where the problem comes in because the Bible says it's only like 7,000 years old. So there's some, some deception there. Um, so it says... It, the strange to, it's strange to think that something that died 76 million years ago plays a role in, moder, in modern ecosystems, but life is opportunistic. Life exists almost everywhere on Earth. Bacteria thrive in hydrothermal vents. Fungi grow inside Chernobyl. Nematode worms crawl under Antarctic ice fields. But most remarkably, remarkably there is a deep biosphere, a vast subterranean microbial ecosystem Starting under our feet and extending into rocks kilometers underground. Why wouldn't life also inhabit buried fossils? So if it does, th that creates problems for identifying the original biological material of fossils. That's where our new research led by college, uh, colleague Evan Saita of the Field Museum in Chicago comes in, providing a detailed look at the organic matter found inside dinosaur bones. It is clear that the popular concept of fossilization, where the bone is completely mineralized and replaced with new material, is wrong. Most of the original bone mer mineral, calcium phosphate, survives. It's the same stuff that was inside a living, breathing dinosaur millions of years ago, which is really only like 7,000 years ago. Remarkable, remarkably, organic mo that's my belief, though, <laughs> my opinion. Um, remarkably, organic molecules comes, can sometimes pers persist. Ancient DNA has let us reconstruct genomes of recently extinct, extinct species and discover previously unknown species such as our cousins, the Denisovans. Ancient proteins have shown the evolutionary history of the extinct mammal, Toxodon. And fossil pigments let us put stripes on dinosaurs and speckles on their eggs. So here, if you can see it, if I get close enough, let me see. I can't really tell if you can see it or not, so I'm sorry if you can. I'll hold it here for a second, but it's showing, because even looking at it, my, you know, looking this close, it's hard to tell what it is, but this says a biological matter extracted from bones and then under the microscope and then bacteria stained with fluorescent dye. So, um... Even more remarkable claims have been announced, including DNA proteins and even cells and blood vessels from dinosaur bones, but these are more than an order of magnitude older than the oldest confirmed DNA and proteins. So they've been disputed. The idea of 
recovering dinosaur tissues and using D dinosaur DNA and proteins to reconstruct evolution is tantalizing. And I don't believe in evolution. I believe in creation. So that's where there's a mix up for my belief anyway. But it's unclear how or if they can survive tens of millions of years. See, that's where the problem comes in. It's not been tens of millions of years. Half of the DNA in a fossil disappears roughly every 500 years and DNA should become unreadable in 1.5 million years. Proteins are more re resilient. The oldest date to 4 million years ago, but the peptide bonds holding a protein's amino acids together also degrade over time. So it's unclear if they could survive in 75 million year old dinosaur fossils. Again, all this stuff is starting to come up after Noah's flood. So they didn't have all this stuff, I believe, to study. And then you to, you know put years onto that of actually finding it and people having the resources or the know with all to um, test these things then, you know, so it's just right on time, actually, I think. Um, meanwhile, living things, bacteria, protists, fungi, plant roots, and nematodes thrive underground. To be sure we have dinosaur tissues, we first need to exclude other less exciting possibilities like contamination by bacterial biofilms. So then they're talking a little bit about the microbe hunting. You should go there and check it out. It, it says like amino acids extracted from the fossils showed the unmistakable signature of life. And that's what I've been saying. When I look at these structures, there is like, you know, and I, of course, I've been a nurse for many years, but it's like, if you know anything about anatomy, that's, it looks like it used to be something alive. It doesn't look like just a rock that's rolled down and, you know, no, it looks like a fossilized something that was alive. It's crazy to look at the structures, you know, and, and so it's not, I just was really... I was looking for heart rocks because I found one when my daughter was little and, you know, just kind of keeping my eyes out for heart rock. And then I started looking at these heart rocks that were seemed to be pretty, you know, available everywhere that they weren't just heart rocks. They were look actually, actually like a heart. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I mean, so it says, um, signature of life amino acids exist in left and right-handed configurations. Living things make left-handed amino acids, but after death, their structure slowly flips back and forth, creating a mix of left and right-handed molecules. Ancient amino acids show a one-to-one -one ratio, but the bones were dominated by left-handed molecules showing recent biological activity. And then there's that picture I, I tried showing you when I first... It's kind of hard to see when I'm outside or whatever. Maybe you can see it now. It's a, it's a picture of a dinosaur bone. We also studied the carbon in the bones. Living things take carbon from atmospheric CO2, which contains radioactive carbon-14. And carbon-14 undergoes radioactive decay, with half of its atoms disappearing roughly every 6,000 years. No detectable carbon-14 should survive from 76 million years ago, but the bones were full of it. E either these dinosaurs died a few thousand years ago, or they were contaminated by living things, and I believe they died a few thousand years ago. To find out what lived in the bones, we extracted DNA and the related molecule RNA from the fossil. What we found was astonishing, a thriving community of bacteria. The bones had 50 times the bacterial DNA as the surrounding mudstones. They weren't empty, empty tombs, but teeming with a unique microbial community, a microbiome. So these are really cool stuff that they're studying. Bones, unlike rock, have open spaces for marrow, blood vessels, and cells. So that's what I've been showing you. These, these rocks and stuff, they have, you know, places that you can see where different things were moving in there. They will have a place where it looks like there's been, you know, some movement inside the bone. And that's what they're talking about. Um, so it says, bones, unlike rock, have been spaces for marrow, blood vessels, and cells, which now create space for microbes and carry water and nutrients. Bone also contains phosphorus needed to make DNA and cell membranes. Moreover, organic tissues and vessel-like structures extracted from the bones, similar to those identified elsewhere as dinosaur tissues, glow like a Christmas tree when stained with a fluorescent dye that binds to DNA. So there's something, if we can get our hands on the fluorescent um, dye to uh, see if it shows the DNA in these stones. That would be a great thing. The abundant DNA suggests these organics are made by bacteria, not dinosaurs. And so it says, looking for fossil organics is a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. We haven't argued that needles don't exist, but we've provided a better idea of how to tell needles from the straw. And although we didn't find dinosaur proteins, we found something equally remarkable, life inside that dinosaur. 
When our Centrosaurus died, its body fed other living things, tyrannosaurs, flies, beetles, and bacteria and fungi. But the process continued long after death. Microbes would have lived in its bones after they were buried under a crustaceous floodplain. Crustaceous floodplain. So they're kind of saying they believe in Noah's flood, you know, the... Then when the sea rolled in and the dinosaur lay a hundred meters beneath the ocean floor, still later beneath an ice glacier, an ice age glacier, and finally just beneath today's badlands, it's extraordinary to think, but inside the remains of a great dinosaur, tiny microbial worlds appeared, evolved and disappeared over millions of years, thousands of years, I believe, in a complex interplay between the living and the long dead. So that's just a real cool, um, you gotta kind of discern from all the stuff we learn so everyone's out trying. They don't, it's so compartmentalized that there's so much deceptions, but the person that's maybe deceiving you doesn't realize it either. So I think there's a lot more good in our world than bad, but there is a lot of bad taken over. So I wanted to share that with you. I see Mud Fossil does that too, where he shows you the articles he's read, and that's a lot easier than me trying to re-paraphrase what I've read. They say it better than I do. But... um. Putting that aside, I wanted to show a few more of these that I think were alive so you can see what I'm talking about. I also have this spray here that has H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully I don't get striped for that because I have before uh, saying that about, but that was more about keeping me healthy. And I don't want to go into a lot of it because I don't want to get in trouble. But also I have a website. I haven't been mentioning it, but it's ZZEasy at um, ZZEasy.com. Um, and I'm trying to get it to run uh, efficiently, but I'm not the the tech person I'd like to be. I'm trying to get better, do better, be better. But um, it's where it's like a Facebook and a next door and a Craigslist where you can buy and sell and you can talk and tell your neighbors stuff and build a community. And that's the whole reason I made this up was to have a community within your community, not just online so that when the lights go out and we don't have Internet, we still have a strong community to try to you know, get us through whatever may come. So that's just um, something to think about. Anyway, it was, a, you, I'll put it down in the link, zzeasy.com, but, uh, and check it out, you know, let me know if it's what you don't like about it or what you think about it or, you know, sign up if you want to. It's free. I don't, I'm not in doing any of this for, for uh, money. I'm just doing it to, commu you know, to connect with people that like the same things I do, that believe the same things I do, and then help other people maybe have a different uh, opinion or, you know, different idea to kind of grasp or think about. So this is another one that I find is, I believe, is something that used to be alive. I don't know what. I don't know if it's the bone and, you know, if it's a, um, oops, if it is actually an organ or part of something. But you can definitely tell by looking at it that it's a bone. I mean, if you have seen a bone, even, you know, the dead bones out in the, I have some actually that I was going to compare with what, that you can tell it's a bone, it's off a deer or an elk or something, and you can compare them. It's mighty amazing, and all the colors, and I don't know if you can see, this is all like biological stuff. But if you just go on to like, I, I use DuckDuckGo for my search engine, but if you go to one of those and um, just put in DNA, dinosaurs, you'll, you'll come up with a lot of interesting information that if you are interested in this stuff you can um, discern for yourself you know what you think here's another something I mean it's a stone it's hard but I believe this used to be something alive whether it be an organ um, you know a reptilian a snake um, you know I don't really know but a lot of these if you look I don't know if it's this one, but you will actually see on both sides or at least one side where it actually looks like it, you know, has eyes or had eyes and was smashed in the mud. Very interesting stuff, I must say. I think it's very, very highly fascinating. Now, this is like just a bone. I mean, that I, I can, you know, it looks like a bone to me, but um, I don't know from where. I want to get a really high... A microscope so that I could really look at it like um, Mud Fossil, Roger over at Mud Fossil University. His is really cool where you can see even when you put this on there, you can see the hydrogen peroxide all trying to go to where the blood was in the body. And it's just, it's fascinating. Fascinating. Here's another one.
So this looks too much like something, you know, if you were to study some anatomy or look at some anatomy pictures. The structure, the biological structure of these look like to me that they used to be alive. And that's uh, making me very curious about this, like this one I showed. Um, spray it down real quick so you can see it better. So it, it looks like it used to be something alive. I mean, don't you think? Or do you think it's just a rock that had all these sticks kind of lined up a certain way? I would like your opinion as well. Um, but, I mean, I can see the reaction, but you probably won't be able to. And it, if you go to uh, Roger Mud Fossil University, he has a microscope. He puts it right on this uh, rock stone. And he shows you how there's actually activity moving that. There's actually a process that's going through. Oh, I've been, already been past my uh, 15 minutes. I talked too much. I'm sorry. I'll do another one later to show you some stuff, but I like to try to keep it at 15. Otherwise, sometimes it won't even upload. But this is another cool stone that I believe used to be alive. There's a hole in the back or where something would, would have been in here. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next time. God bless you all, and have a blessed, wonderful day. It's beautiful here in New Mexico.